sensitivity. Means like with, sensi with sensitivity. In other words, you have to be careful how you dress. It says modesty and sensitivity. That means you have to be sensitive on the way you dress. Why does it say sen sensibly? Sensitive means you have to be sensitive. You have to be sensitive. There's a reason you have to be sensitive on the way you dress. I'm going to explain that later, but let us let us keep reading. The scripture says, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9, also that women should adorn themselves modestly, insensibly, in seemly apparel. That means in the way you dress, you have to be sensitive on the way you dress. Also that women should adorn themselves modestly, modestly, modest dressing, not provocatively, but modestly, and sensibly, in seemly apparel. Not with braided hair. You see, it's saying the way you adorn yourself is not with braided hair. Which is also the elaborate hairstyle that we were reading about in First Peter. It says, you should adorn yourself, you know, in modest apparel and in sensibility. In other words, also that women should adorn themselves modestly and sensibly in seemly apparel. Not, not, you see, not, the scripture says not. That is, that is not how God wants his children, the women in the church to adorn themselves. It says, not with braided hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly attire. Costly attire is costly clothing, fine clothes. You know, he says, not with braided hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly attire, but by good deeds. You see, that's how he wants you to make yourself beautiful, women. If by is with good deeds, not with the makeups and the, and the elaborate hairstyles, the braiding of the hair. You know, all these things that women get excited about, you know, you know, when they, you know, when they're going to the beauty salon, you know, you see, that's not what he wants you to adorn yourself with, you know, he says, God says he wants you to make yourself beautiful with good deeds. Let us read it again. Also that women should adorn themselves modestly and sensibly in seemly apparel, not with braided hair or gold, or pearls, or costly attire, but by good deeds. You adorn yourself with good deeds, as befits. You see, that's what fits, as befits women who profess religion. Not those women who profess their faith in Christ Jesus, their faith in God. Let a woman, you see, so that's what we read here. Then, uh, there's more here, but I'm going to read uh, verse 15. Then it says, yet women... To show you how important dressing modestly is to the Lord. How serious God take it. He even put salvation on it. He says, yet women will be saved. That's verse 15. Yet women will be saved through bearing children. If she continues in faith and love and holiness with modesty. You see? Even your salvation. Modesty has a big part to play in your salvation. That means, for also your salvation is tied to modesty. So that's not something you can just forsake. You know, you can't forsake that because that's part of your salvation. So he says, yet women, First Timothy chapter two verse fifteen, yet women will be saved. You see, will be saved. He's, he's demonstrating to you. The word of God is telling you how women will be saved. And you are listening, wants to be saved. You are listening, you are the child of God. You know, and you might be a, 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 a daughter of God listening to me right now. So this is for you. This is what the scriptures say. And remember, the scriptures is the word of God. And the word of God is Jesus. And Jesus is the way to heaven. So we must follow the way. And this is what the way is saying. This is what the word of God is saying. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Yet woman, you see, yet woman will be saved. You see, it's telling you how the women will be saved. Yet women will be saved. This is how they will be saved. Yet women will be saved through. The women will be saved through. There's a way that God will save the women. The scripture tells you how. Yet women will be saved through bearing children. That means it's not, it's not wrong. It's not wrong to bear children. Because nowadays, they act like it's wrong sometimes. You know? You got abortion clinics. You got, you know... Sometimes they encourage people to do it, you know. So, according to the word of God, bearing children is good, you know. So, yet woman will be saved. Yet woman will be saved through bearing children. 
if she continues, if she continues, if she continues, tell you if she will be saved, if that means there's a condition. God is putting a condition on the women if they want to be saved, and there's a condition for all of us. But for the woman, he's putting this condition. He's saying this: she will be saved through childbearing. And she will be saved through bearing children if, if she continues in faith. If she continues in faith, that means she has to have faith. If she continues, she has to have faith in the Lord Jesus. If she continues in faith and love and holiness with modesty. And we just read that he says that women have to dress themselves modestly. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about modest dressing for the woman. Modest dressing is also holy dressing. It's not provocative dressing. It's, dress, it's dressing that is sensible. That's why the Word of God says that the women have to dress modestly and sensibly. Sensibly means with sensitivity. When you dress, you got to be sensitive. But when you're being sensitive, sensitive to what? You're being sensitive to the Word of God. Sensitive to your brothers, women. You got to be sensitive to your brothers in the church. You got to be sensitive toward uh, 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 your fellow fellow church members. You have to be sensitive to your brothers because if you don't dress modestly, you're not being sensitive to them. When you dress with dresses that are not modest, in other words, you dress with, uh, uh, with fine dresses, you know, or you dress with, you know, uh, uh, mini skirts. That is not a modest dress. Mini, mini skirt. Mini skirt, you dress with tight jeans, tight trousers, tight pants. Dresses, those dresses are not sensitive. You're not being sensible towards your brothers because now, what is your brothers going to do? They're going to start to look at you. They're going to start to look at you. And what are they going to do when they look at you? They're going to look at you with lust. And what does the scripture say about a man that looks at a woman and lusts after her in his heart? The scripture says, when a man looks at a woman and lusts after her in his heart, he has already committed adultery with that woman in his heart. So that means when you do, when, when God is telling you to dress modestly, he has a reason for it. Because he doesn't want, he doesn't want your brothers that's in the church. Your brothers that might not be in the church, you know. Because we all, we, God created us all. You know, he doesn't want no one to perish. So the Lord... He wants you, when, when he says for you to dress modestly, that's because he doesn't want, uh, want your dressing, when it's, when, when it's not modest, to cause other people to fall. He doesn't want to cause, he doesn't want your brothers in the church to fall into sexual lust with you. He doesn't want that. And when they fall into sexual lust, that is sin. That is sin. And the Bible tells us the wages of sin is death. The Bible says no adulterer will inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. No adulterer will hurt the kingdom of God. You know, that's if they don't repent, you know, because the, the Lord uh, uh, also says, you know, you know, when we repent, when we repent and get baptized, our sins are forgiven. And, and, and repent means like, ask God for forgiveness and turn away from, from the sin, you know. But the dressing of a modest dressing brings on this thing. It brings on sexual lust. It brings sexual lust out of the men in the church. That's why sometimes, you know, you wonder. That's one of the reasons why there's so, so much sexual sin in churches today. I'm not saying it's everywhere, but it's a problem. It's a problem. There's a lot of sexual sin in churches today. It's been going on. It's, not, it's nothing new. It's been going on. But that's not the place where it was supposed to be happening. The Bible tells us to flee sexual immorality. That's one of the only very few sins that the Bible tells us to run away from, to flee. The Bible tells us to pull a Joseph, to pull a Joseph when it comes to sexual sin. In other words, run, run, to flee from that, to let there not be, not even one hint of sexual immorality among you. So when you have women dressing with mini skirts, short skirts, tight pants, tight jeans, breasts are being exposed, and then you can see their, their, 
the the the, the large derriers, the, the buttocks exposed, all these things. You see that in the church. Those are hints of sexual immorality. And yet the Bible says to us, to us in the scripture, let not let there not be even a hint of sexual sin. And when they're dressed like that in the church, what do you find the brothers in the church doing? Lusting. They're in church, but they're lusting. In the temple of God. They're in the temple of God. Sometimes even doing worship is taking place. It's happening. It's happening doing worship. It's happening when the pastor is preaching. It's happening doing service. Because of the insensibility of the women in the church. Because they're insensitive. When they're insensitive. Or because they were not taught. They were not taught in this area of the gospel. They were not taught in this area of the gospel. Or because they misunderstood the word of God. But today... The Lord has shown you mercy and have gave you this opportunity that you may hear, that you may hear the truth, so it may set you free. So as a child of God, I advise you today, allow me to give you this advice in the name of Jesus, because the way the Lord made me ever since I came to the Lord Jesus, He gave me this heart that wants to see not only myself saved, but to see all saved. He gave me His heart. And the Bible says the Lord wants all to be saved. He desires that all men should be saved. All men should be saved. That's why he sent Jesus and Jesus died for us on the cross. You know, that's why he sent Christ Jesus, one and only son, the beloved, his beloved son. He sent him all the way from heaven and made him into, uh, like us. And he lived in this world and was, was born into this world and became a little baby and grew up and suffered from the hands of men just so that men can be saved. You see? So God had given me this heart, you know, for souls, for, 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 for people, for everyone, not just Christians, for everyone, just to see them saved because uh, hell is eternal. Hell is a place that's eternity. Eternity. Somebody, I don't think there's one person in this entire world that will be satisfied with seeing somebody burning forever. Eventually they're going to say enough. So, but the, the, the truth of the matter is hell is eternal. So, that is the reason why that I'm speaking this today. You know, for your salvation. For your salvation, ladies in the church. It doesn't matter what church you go to. The word of God is the same. <laughs> the word of God doesn't change. What It doesn't matter what church you go to. The word of God is still the same word of God. Of course, we know we have pastors that, that, that switch the word, change the word, preach other doctrines, preach false doctrines. We know that we have pastors like that. But we know also that the Bible, what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us to study the word. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So even though they might, the pastors, the leaders in the church, they might not be telling us the truth. They might not be telling us the whole truth. But the Lord himself instructs us to know the Bible for ourselves. So we're not misled. So we are not deceived by workers of iniquity in the church. You see? Sometimes they might not know it. So they might not preach it to you. Sometimes they might not know this part of the scripture. You know? You know? But the Bible say, the Bible say, you know, uh, uh, the Bible say, the Lord, the Lord wants to set his people free. He wants to set the captives free. So, so when people are, are being captive, or are held captive by sin, he wants to set them free from sin so they can be saved. And so today, I'm advising you, uh, allow me to, by the grace of Jesus, by the grace of Jesus, allow yourself to receive this word. Because in the end, in the end, you will not regret it. In the end, the word of God will stand. The Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. The word of a man can fall. A man can speak and it falls on the ground and bear no fruit. But the word of God, God can speak his word and it falls to the ground and becomes a seed and then becomes a tree and grows. 
You see, because it's God's word. God's word will never return to him empty. Whatever he says in the scripture will hold on all the way to the end. So if he says in the scripture the women has to dress modestly and, with, and sensibly and to adorn themselves in modesty, then he is saying that. Then the women has to follow. He even says for them to be saved. It's going to be through faith, love, and also it's going to be with modesty. That means modesty is part of the salvation. So today, I am advising you in the name of Jesus Christ. If, I don't know, I don't know you, I don't know, uh, uh, I don't know you, but the Lord knows you. So if you are here listening, probably it's the Lord that brought you here. Because the Lord brought me to preach this here. You know, the Lord is the one that leads me to preach. You know, so he gives me the word to preach. He allows me. He gives me the, the understanding, the wisdom. Sometimes he shows me visions. You know, the Lord is the one that he brings me to preach the word. Sometimes he put the word in my heart, in my spirit. You know, so now he allows me to come to you. And he also allows you to come and listen. Only for one reason, per only because of his love for you. Because he does not desire that you perish. So now... I advise you in the name of Jesus, if you are a woman, it doesn't matter what church you go to, like I said, it doesn't matter what denomination, what church you go to, you know, the Bible say, we the body of Christ, you know, we the body of Christ, it's one body, even though people be in different churches, the word of God is still going to be the same, somebody can be in different ministries, the word of God is still the same, you can be following, you know, one person, somebody following another person, the word of God is still the same. You can never change the word of God. Men can never change God's word. We can, we cannot change it. So it's always going to be the same. So even if it's not being preached, it's still going to be the same. As the Lord says the woman will be saved through bearing, through, uh, through bearing children if she continues in faith, in love, and holiness with modesty. So that means modesty is also a part. Of the salvation for the women to be saved they have to also do modesty they also have to dress with modesty that's why God tells us tells the women to do it you know so modest dressing is, 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 is with sensitivity you want to be sensitive on how you dress so you don't dress in ways that's going to provoke your fellow uh, Christians your brothers in the church to fall into sexual lust so there's ways you can dress that's not modest because it's gonna it's, because it's gonna provoke a sexual lust through thought is going to provoke your brothers in the church to lust at you. The Lord says we have, the women have to dress modestly and, with sen and, 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 and sensibly. You got to be sensitive to your brothers, you know, so they don't lust at you. So they don't sin on your account. So that means you got to dress modestly. And when you dress modestly, it's not for you. You're dressing for the Lord. You know, because of, 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 because of your love for God. Because now you are, you are, uh, you are the, 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 the bride of Christ. You know, God is your, Jesus is your bridegroom and you're the bride of Christ. So you dress now not to please the world, not to please yourself, not, to, you dress now to please the Lord. You don't dress to please your brothers in the church, you know, or the pastor. You don't dress to please the pastor. You don't dress to please the prophets. You don't dress to please nobody. You dress, you don't dress to please no prophet, no evangelist, no pastor. You dress to please the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ, because the Lord Jesus Christ is who? He's your bridegroom, and you are his bride. And the bridegroom says, which is the word of God says, that his bride, which is the holy women of God, will dress in modesty. You know, so you won't dress to provoke your brothers with a modest dressing. Immodest dressing, that's what it does. That's why they say modesty. Immodest dressing provoke lust from the brothers in the church. You know, so you have to dress modestly. You know, not you got to dress with long skirts to cover your legs, to cover your body. Don't dress with tight skirts or tight clothing because they will expose your body and, and that is not modest dressing. Modest dressing covers you well. So when men looks at you, they don't lust at you. Modest dressing covers your breast area well so your breast area is not exposed. It covers your buttocks well so your buttocks is not, is not, is, is, is not, being, is not an exhibition in the church. Your buttocks is not supposed to be an exhibition in the church. Your legs is not supposed to be an exhibition in the church. You know, your legs is the body of Christ. Your whole body is the body of Christ. Your whole body is the temple of the living God. You can't do what you want with it anymore because it's not yours anymore. You know, the Bible says you are not your own. You are not your own. Honor God with your body. Present your body as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. For it's your spiritual act 
of worship. Today is the conclusion. That's the conclusion of today's message. And and I pray that the Lord has blessed you with this message. And I pray and I pray that 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 this message will will change you, change you, change you, uh, uh, change you for the Lord, change you for the Lord. You know, so that your soul, your soul may be saved. So that your soul may be saved. What good is it if a man gain the whole world but lose his soul? What good is it? What good is it? What good? Might as well lose things for the Lord. You know, if the if the if the if it's a mini skirt, get rid of it. What good is it? You know, it's not going to help you in your salvation. As a matter of fact, you know, you dress with mini skirts, you're going to be living in sin, in sin, because it's, it's unholy, it's immodest. You know. Get rid of the miniskirts. Get rid of the tight jeans and the tight pants. You know, and start to gather your to start to gather the dressing that pleases the Lord. You know, the long skirts that cover your legs well. You know. So may the Lord bless you today and shalom.